first, let's welcome Dr. Chad Weston of Novant Health Oceanside Family Medicine and Convenient Care. Dr. Weston, we're so glad to have you back on the show again today. Glad to be back. Great. And I, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy day because I know how busy you are, but we do certainly appreciate it. And for our viewers out there who may not have met you last time on the show, uh, remind us a little bit about your education and your background. Well, my background uh, started in South Carolina where I went to undergraduate, mm -hmm. and then I completed residency training program in Cabarrus Family Medicine, just mm -hmm. north of Charlotte. Sure. And then I opened a practice there back in 2003, and then I decided to get a little bit more coastal, so I've been here since October. Of uh, last year. Last year, 2017, correct. Yeah, absolutely. So you joined um, Oceanside, Novant Health Oceanside Family Medicine and Convenient Care late last year, mm -hmm. right? And how's that going for you? It's Busy. going well. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to believe I've been there almost a year. Yeah, that's great. You know, time flies. It does. <laughs> I used to make fun of my parents and grandparents when they'd say time flies, and I'd think, it's never going to be Christmas. And now that... I'm in their <laughs> shoes, I think, oh. Well, my, no, my teenager told me I'm we were driving down the road, he was like, Saturdays used to last forever, and now they seem like they go <laughs> See, away in a blink of Yeah, it, it happens to all of us, so. Well, today, um, I'm hoping we can focus on some back-to-school tips for sure. children and for families. So first, let's talk about wellness visits. So you do offer wellness visits for children at the clinic? That's correct, and that's one of the reasons why I joined this particular practice uh -huh. is that they wanted to expand the full scope of family medicine, which does include newborns, infants, toddlers, children, teenagers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of the practices see children maybe like at two and up, but you see newborns, is that correct? Correct. So my youngest patient's a couple days old right now. My oldest patient's How's about sweet. 98, I think. And so your youngest full spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, well, getting back to the wellness visits, should you do those annually? We typically recommend those annually, yeah. and that gives us an opportunity to do a couple of things. One is develop some rapport. Uh -huh. So as a child grows up and goes through different stages in development, particularly when they get into the teenage years where they may be facing some things that yeah. Um, quite frankly, they're not ready to face. Yeah. Uh, they need some adult guidance uh -huh. when facing those decisions. And so that relationship is started at a very young age so that they have an adult that, can, that they can trust and can right. confide in. Yeah, that's great. Um, for parents out there who may have children that are going to start kindergarten mm -hmm. this year, do you have any um, tips about immunizations and um, you know, give us some guidelines around that? Well, typically after the age of four, uh, a child before entering the public school system mm -hmm. would be required to have uh, measles, mumps, and rubella, which is in one shot, oh. uh, and then an update on the chickenpox shot as well. Mm -hmm. um, those are what are required. And then um, the flu vaccine is usually recommended, particularly in children who are going to be around other children mm -hmm. in a school environment and that's recommended on an annual basis. Okay, and you have those immunizations available in your office, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, for older kids, what kind of immunizations would they require when they're starting to go through puberty or um, becoming teenagers? What, right. what do you get around that time? Well, and the same thing, annual flu vaccine because they're around other teenagers okay. who like to share their germs yeah. and cough. Um, but then also, you, we call these the middle school shots, the meningitis okay. shot, and then updating the tetanus and the pertussis. Those are vaccines that we recommend prior to going into middle school particularly. Those traditionally have been vaccines that were recommended mm -hmm. upon finishing high school prior to going to college yeah, or college. dormitories. Yeah. But it's been shown that there's actually some additional benefit immunizing them at an earlier age. There's another vaccine that's optional. It wasn't optional for my boys, though. They all received the hepatitis B, or mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the human papillomavirus, mm -hmm. the Gardasil HPV. vaccine. Yes. And uh -huh. that's a series of three, um, three huh. shots. At, at what age completed. do you give those? Um, typically around middle school, we start having that conversation. Mm. And the idea is that we protect them before they engage in adult decisions and adult behaviors. Right. I see a lot on TV about those, how important it is to, to immunize both boys and girls. Uh, for that. So uh, I think the media is doing a good job of that. Yeah, I think like anything that is a new recommendation, it does take some time for people to get familiar with what the recommendations are mm -hmm. and to get a better understanding of what it is that we're trying to accomplish with that particular immunization. Mm -hmm. 
Um, how about sports physicals? Do you do those? We do those as well. Those tend to be a little bit more uh, cursory. <laughs> uh, a pretty quick review of any significant right. medical problems or any existing um, medications that they take for things like asthma or any recent injuries like concussion, for example. Yeah, that's a big we, thing right now. It is, and you take those things into consideration and gives us an opportunity to briefly cancel a high school athlete on you know, how to take care of themselves and how to participate safely in whatever sport that they choose. So we do offer those. Uh, our office is open seven days a week. Um, so we offer those through a variety of different channels, including me seeing my own patients as well. Okay, so they could do them in the convenient care correct. part of it on the weekend? That's correct. Well, that would be we, handy. Um, I participated in a volunteer sports mm -hmm. physical day at the West Brunswick uh, uh, high, school high School here, and uh, we, we saw quite a few high school <laughs> and upcoming middle school students, well, uh, which they don't, they don't think that, oh, I'm going to be playing a high school sport, I need to get my sports physical before right. them, but for fall sports particularly. Right. Um, well, you say it's sort of a cursory um, uh, examination, but hopefully most of those kids are in your office anyway, and so you know them fairly well. And we can. I mean, there, there's some kids who may that may be their only contact only, oh. with healthcare, and that gives us an opportunity well, to identify you know kids who may yeah. have some serious medical problems that haven't been diagnosed previously. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of great information, um, but I, I wanted to bring up one thing. I heard you're going to participate in the Novant Health Men's Forum. Novant Health Men's Health Forum. Men's Health Forum, it's that's correct. It's in September, uh, Wednesday, September 12th, correct? Correct. And you'll be participating in that. Yeah, I'm going to be part of the panel of physicians yeah. in the area. And it's open to any male in our community, right? And probably there are significant others, too, because that usually oh. who uh, invites the, the male in for an well, exam. Well, that's true. That's true. Um, well, I understand there's a lot of great physicians that are going to be speaking on all kinds of topics, from prostate and sexual health to general wellness. Correct. And um, have you chosen your topic yet? Well, my topics are going to be the big three, uh, oh. uh, nutrition, <laughs> yeah. uh, physical exercise, and physical activity, and sleep. And, you know, my, my, my interest in preventive care really does focus a lot on those particular topics. And, you know, coming up with daily strategies and small decision making about how to accomplish bigger goals is really a, a cornerstone in a lot of people's health and if they can get control over that then they don't need as many prescriptions to manage yeah, their medical problems. Yeah. I understand we're even going to be talking about skin care um, mm -hmm. at the event. I believe Dr. Khan is going to be there mm -hmm. and he's going to talk about skin care and, and ways to look more youthful and feel better and so I think that's going to be good and maybe the, some of the significant others will be interested in that too. Uh, and again that's on Wednesday September 12th from mm -hmm. 3 to 5 at Brunswick Community College Event Center. Right? Correct. Yeah that'll be great. Um, going back to the children um, there was one question I wanted to um, I wanted to talk about picking up germs. Okay. What advice do you give parents uh, when they send their kids off to school? What's the best advice you can give your parents? I think I know what you're going to say, but. Well, yeah, wash your hands. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's what I do. Uh, and I take a bath in germs every day. You know, I get, yeah, my, I I get my annual flu shot. I wouldn't ask somebody <laughs> else to do it, and I wouldn't do it myself. Um, and I think taking care of the big three, if a kid is very physically active and eating a good balanced diet full of vitamin C and colorful fruits and vegetables yeah. and getting an adequate amount of sleep, your immune system and your body will take care of you yeah. and you'll be able to shake off colds and flus and things like that. And again, an annual flu shot has is, is been shown to help reduce uh, absenteeism in school-aged children so there's some benefit to not being stuck home with a sick kid but able to send them to school to make sure they don't miss any important tests. Yeah, yeah <laughs> really. <laughs> well I know when uh, babies have to go to daycare and stuff they pick up all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. I'm curious how at what age can you give a child a flu shot? So uh, typically it's six, six months and older. Six months That's what older. we recommend. Mm -hmm. Because I know new moms are always afraid when they send their child to school or to daycare or whatever. That's they start bringing everything home, and then mom gets it and dad gets it, and all the right. siblings. And so it's a real mess. Well, but. and it's a hazard of being around other people yeah. who, you know, once they come down with an illness, sometimes they don't know that they're sick until they've already had an opportunity to spread it. Right. So if there's a viewer out there who would like to make an appointment with you, um, how might they do that? Just give the office a call. 
Um, that's probably one of the easier ways mm -hmm. to go about that. But we actually have an online function as well. And with some open access scheduling and some alternative that's, ways to do I visits, love that. that's uh, that's probably an, uh, a more conducive way of making an appointment at two o'clock in the morning if you so choose. <laughs> oh, well, and we can put the website and your phone number. Um, we can scroll that across the screen um, while we're talking, and that would give folks uh, how to contact you. So perfect. Thanks so much for being here today. It's Thanks been for a pleasure. Me. Um, I hope to see you soon. Well, do thanks.